Hello everyone, welcome to CSE 320 Data Communication Lecture. Today we are going to learn about Chapter 5 from Fluorescent Book that is Analog Transmission. In the previous chapter, we have learned about digital transmission. In this chapter, we learn how we can convert a digital bit to a digital signal or an analog signal to a digital signal. So from the name, we can understand what will be the basic goal of this chapter that is we want to convert everything to analog signal that is we want to convert analog data to uh, sorry we want to convert a digital signal to a uh, or digital data to a analog signal or a analog data to a digital signal so uh, in this lecture we will be mainly focus on the on the first part that is converting the digital data or digital bits to analog signal so that will be the whole idea or that will be the whole scenario of the process that is the sender will have some digital data and in the sender side we will use a modulator that will convert this digital data to a analog signal and this analog signal will then be sent from the sender to the receiver using a link and in the receiver end the process will be inverse that is the there will be a demodulator that will convert this analog signal to digital data so that the receiver can use this digital data so before going deep into this digital to analog conversion first we will try to understand how we or how people have think to uh, convert or use analog signal to send digital data so the basic idea or uh, or the main idea behind it was that a analog signal is basically have some characteristics that uniquely identify an analog signal from another analog signal so what if we change these characteristics so that we can identify there are two different analog signal and based on this two different analog signal we can identify that here is a change in bit so in one signal it is a zero bit or another signal it is a one bit so and we have basically three characteristics of an analog signal that is the amplitude of an analog signal the frequency and the phase okay so the main idea is that there will be a certain uh, fixed signal that is known as the carrier signal and we will change one of these three characteristics that the frequency or amplitude or phase of this carrier signal and that then we will call it as manipulated signal or modified signal and this modified signal will carry the information of 0 bit or 1 bit so based on how we change the characteristics of this analog uh, signal there are three types of uh, conversion from digital to analog and uh, first one is known as amplitude shift key from the name we can understand here we are using the amplitude characteristics then we have frequency shift key here we are using the frequency and finally we have phase shift key uh, and there is another one where we combine these two characteristics that is the amplitude and phase uh, and that type of uh, digital to analog conversion is known as quadrature amplitude modulation okay so in the next part we will basically learn about these three type of shift key the first one is the amplitude shift key as the name suggesting uh, in amplitude shift key we are basically using the amplitude of an analog signal to uniquely identify either the digital bit was zero or one so here the frequency and phase of the analog signal will remain unchanged uh, sorry will not be considered the basic consideration will be the amplitude so as we can see here is an example of binary amplitude shift key here 
uh, as you can see if the bit is 1 there will be some certain amplitude of the analog signal and if the bit is 0 there will be no amplitude or the amplitude will be absolutely 0 so in the receiver side the receiver will identify based on the amplitude of its received signal that if the bit is a 0 bit or an 1 bit so as we are using a 0 1 amplitude this is also known as on off key that is for one we are using on or positive amplitude and for zero we are using zero or off amplitude okay so this is the implementation of binary amplitude shift key here this is the carrier signal that we have already talked about the carrier signal is basically the initial signal and based on different bits of the digital data we have changed or manipulated this carrier signal to this signal and this signal is known as the modulated signal so for one there is a strain amplitude and for zero there is no amplitude so as you can see in this scenario we are basically using one bit to uh, 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 one bit at a time to represent uh, uh, to send or using two different amplitude to represent one bit there are another type so if we can then send multiple level of amplitude so that so we can actually send more than one bit at a time so here is another example and this type of amplitude shift key is known as multi-level amplitude shift key so in this multi-level amplitude shift key we are basically using four level of amplitude so here is an example of multi-level amplitude shift key for 0 0 we are using this amplitude for 0 1 we are using this amplitude for 1 0 we are using this amplitude and for 1 1 we are using this amplitude and as we can see uh, the other two characteristics the phase and the frequency of the signal has remained have remained same we are only changing the amplitude of this signal to identify different bit and here as we are using four different amplitude we can uh, we can send two bit at a time the next type of uh, shift key is the frequency shift key in the frequency shift key we are basically using the frequency to uh, to identify the bit of the digital signal so e, this is an example of binary frequency shift key so as we can see it is almost similar to amplitude shift key if we are using one as a bit the frequency will get higher and if we are using zero the frequency will get smaller so from this uh, change or in frequency the receiver can uniquely identify either the this signal is representing zero bit or or, or this signal element is representing zero bit or one bit if the frequency is higher it is a one bit if the frequency is lower it is a zero bit and frequency shift key has another two types or we can differentiate frequency shift key in two types one is non-coherent frequency shift key in non-coherent frequency shift key when we change from one frequency to another frequency we do not care about the phase of the previous signal so a new frequency will incur a new phase and so as it is not considering the phase it is known as non-coherent frequency shift key and in coherent frequency shift key we are actually considering uh, the phase of the fre previous frequency so if we are changing or shifting from one frequency to another frequency the phase will be continuous or the phase will be considered so in the previous lecture as we have seen when we are shifting from one frequency to another frequency the phase is uh, continuing 
so it is basically an example of coherent frequency shift gain okay so if we, if we do not consider the phase let's say for this um, frequency we have started from this point so that will become a not coherent frequency shift gain okay and finally as we have already seen that amplitude shift gain has another type that is known as multi-level amplitude uh, sorry uh, in this slide we are basically uh, considering or we are basically showing the whole process of frequency shift gain that is for one bit the frequency get higher for zero bit the frequency get lower and as the phase is unchanged this is a coherent frequency shift key okay so this is the slide that we have i wanted to talk about in this slide we are actually um, watching the multi-level frequency shift key so it is almost similar to uh, amplitude frequency amplitude shift key in amplitude we have used four different level of amplitude to uh, send two bit at a time so in multi-level frequency shift key we will again use four different frequency to send two bit at a time so for zero zero we will send the signal by this frequency for 0 1 we will use this frequency for 1 1 or oh, sorry 1 0 we will use this frequency and finally for 1 1 this frequency will be used so as we are using four level of frequency this is called multi-level frequency shift gain. so if we want to send three bit at a time we will need eight level of different frequency so that we can uniquely identify the eight different combinations of the three bit okay and finally we have come to the third part that is known as phase shift gain so uh, same to amplitude shift gain and frequency shift gain here we will basically change the phase of a signal to identify either the bit is zero or one but phase shift keying has a advantage over amplitude shift keying and frequency shift keying. The advantage as we have already learned about transmission impairment, we have seen that there are three types of transmission impairment, attenuation, distortion and noise and all of these um, uh, three types of transmission impairment we have seen that it either changes the amplitude of the original signal or the shape that is the amplitude or frequency of the original signal but it is very rare or uncommon that a phase of an original signal has got change in transmission impairment so from that we can identify that or we can say that if we use frequency shift keying it will be a more robust system because it will not be affected by any of the transmission impairment that is attenuation distortion or noise so uh, so we can so it will be less vulnerable than amplitude shift keying or frequency shift keying and we can send the digital data from sender to receiver easily so if we are using this uh, uh, digital to analog conversion in a very noisy channel then we will use frequency shift gain over amplitude shift gain so we will use phase shift gain over amplitude shift gain or frequency shift gain okay so before going to phase shift gain let's remind the different phase of an analog signal as you can see if the signal starts from this point we call it the starting phase of zero degree if it starts from this point we call it 90 degree if it starts from this point and continues by this then we call it 180 degree phase if it starts from this point we call it by 270 degree phase and if it starts from uh, so, so this is the uh, actually the start point so it, we, we can call it 360 degree or zero degree both so the basic idea is or the basic things that we need to learn 
for the next part is where we are starting a signal if we are starting here it is 0 degree 90 degree 80 degree 180 degree or 270 degree okay so based on the starting point we are basically considering or we are basically telling the phase of the analog signal okay so in the binary phase shift key we are basically changing the initial starting point of the analog signal to change the phase and here if the beat is one we are starting from the zero degree or this is called in phase analog signal and if the beat is zero we are starting from 180 degree or we can call it out of phase analog signal we can also call it a inverse analog signal so for one it is a normal analog signal and for zero it is an inverse analog signal so the receiver same goes um, for binary and shift key phase shift key that is um, sorry it will be phase shift key so there will be a key carrier signal so if the beat is one the phase will be in phase and if the beat is zero the phase will be out of phase okay so how the receiver will identify the receiver will identify zero bit or one bit from the shape of the analog signal or from, from the phase of the analog signal if the phase is in phase that is one if the phase is out of phase or 180 degree that is zero okay and we have already seen that amplitude shift keying and frequency shift keying has another type that is known as multi-level amplitude shift keying or frequency shift keying where uh, we are using four level to send two bit at a time similar things has for phase shift keying and that is known quadrature is known as quadrature phase shift key okay so the name quadrature comes from four level of phase uh, so there will be four level of different phase and based on this four level we can identify two bit at a time okay so the basic idea is pretty simple we will convert a that two bit into two part one is the left part and another one is the right part okay for left part we will use a frequency shift key for the right part we will use another frequency shift key then we will have two modul uh, modulated or converted signal this one or this one and finally we will combine these two converted signal to another or final signal and phase of this final signal will identify or will help us to differentiate this two bit okay so let's see how it is working so let's first consider the left bit for this two bit zero zero the left bit is zero so we have used this one for left bit we have used a frequency shift gain that is for zero bit it is out of phase for one bit it is in phase okay so using this technique we have converted this left bit this left bit this left bit this left bit and this left bit and for right bit we have used another phase shift key as we can see the right bit was 0 0 1 1 okay for right bit we have used again for 0 out of phase for 1 in phase but here the in phase is slightly different it instead of starting from um, starting from zero it is starting from uh, 90 degree okay so this will be our second modulated signal now we will convert this signal and this and combine this signal and this signal together to gain or to convert this final signal so that will be our final signal so for 00, zero we will gain this one for 10 we will gain this one for 01 we will gain this one and for 11 we will gain this signal 
now the question is how can we identify from from these two different signal what will be the combined signal right we simply uh, do not want to uh, do not want to memorize this uh, value okay so for this we use a unique technique that is known as constellation diagram okay so the constellation diagram basically tells us what will be the combined signal if we have two carrier signal okay so how this constellation diagram works here the xx so this will be our uh, this will be a constellation diagram so this diagram is basically looks like a simple graph it has an x axis and an y axis okay so how this constellation diagram work this x axis basically represents the left bit and this y axis represents the right bit okay so uh, the uh, length from zero uh, either the positive side or the negative side the length actually represents the amplitude of the left bit and if the signal is in phase we will uh, write or we will draw the amplitude in its right side and if the signal is out of phase or uh, inverse phase we will write the amplitude in the left side okay so that is for the left bit okay now for the right bit we will use the y axis okay for amplitude we will use the length uh, from 0 0 uh, so the, if the length is 10 it will be either this point or this point okay so actually from 0 to a point it will consider the amplitude of the um, right bit and if the right same for previous one if the right bit is in phase then we will use the upper portion and if the right bit is out of phase then we will use this lower portion okay and based on this left bit and right bit we will get two point and now we will combine these two points to get the final signal or combine these two signals to get the final signal so here is an example as we can see so this one is actually representing the left bit so as we can see this is the this was the amplitude of the left bit and as it was in the right side so it was in in phase and for the right bit this was the amplitude and as it was the upper side so it was also in phase and if we combine these two point we get this point okay so that will be the final signal or combined signal so the amplitude of the combined signal will be this length and the phase of this combined signal will be this angle okay so let's uh, see some example or let's see this one how we can calculate this minus one thing 35 or minus 45 from this constellation diagram okay so let's consider this 0 0 b so for the left 0 as we have seen the left 0 will be represented in this x axis okay okay so let's see the signal for this left zero the signal there has some certain amplitude so we need to draw some amplitude from from zero point either this side or this side so which side it will be it uh, determines the phase of this signal right so as we can see the phase of this signal is out of phase as it is starting from 180 degree okay so it will be in its left side okay so from so this zero bit will be represented by this uh, this point or this point okay let's say this point okay now consider this zero bit okay again this is the signal for this zero bit 
so it has some amplitude so it will be either this side or this side and which side it will be it will determine by its face and again we can see it is starting from out of face or 180 degree uh, sorry 180 sorry uh, 270 degree okay so it will be again in our left side sorry uh, the second bit will be represented by this y-axis okay so it will be either this point or this point and as you can see it is out of face so it will be this point okay so now if we combine this two point or connect this two point we can get the point here sorry my drawing was a bit incorrect but uh, if we can connect this point and this point it will combine a point here so that will represent the 0 0 bit okay now from this point we can easily identify uh, the amplitude and the phase of this combined signal as we have already seen the length will be the amplitude and the uh, angle will be the phase so what will be the angle if we uh, calculate it in anti-clockwise direction then the angle will be in positive sign so the angle will be 90 degree plus 90 degree 180 degree plus 45 degree that is 225 degree okay and if we calculate is anti-clockwise then sorry in clockwise then it will be something like uh, 90 degree plus 45 degrees so it will be 135 degree so as we have calculated in clockwise so the angle will be minus 135 degree okay so we can easily identify the shape uh, amplitude and phase of the combined signal from this constellation diagram okay let's see for this one zero bit okay the left bit is 1, so we will represent it from this x axis. For 1, it will be either this side or this side as it has some amplitude. Okay, and uh, which side it will be? It will be determined by its face, and as you can see, the face is positive or in face, so it will be in its positive side. Okay, and for 0 bit, we will represent it from our right bit like most bit we will represent it by this y-axis and uh, it has some amplitude so it will be either this point or this point but here we can see it is again in out of phase because it is starting from uh, 270 degree so it will be in this point okay so if we combine this two point that is our one zero so the uh, amplitude will be this one and the angle if we uh, calculate in clockwise it is 45 degree and as we are calculating it in clockwise so it will be minus 45 degree okay so if we calculating an angle in clockwise it is negative and if we are calculating the angle in anti-clockwise it is positive okay and uh, let's consider the third one that is 0 1 for 0 the point will be for 0 as you can see from the um, signal the point will be in its left side because it is out of phase so the will be the point and for right bit we represent it from the y-axis and the point will be upper side because it is in phase so that is the point and if we connect this two point that is our zero one point and this will be the amplitude and the angle will be 90 degree plus 45 degree that is 135 degree clear okay let's consider for the final bit for the left bit it is one so it will be represented by this x axis and as it is one it is in phase so that will be our point and for the right one 
it will be represented by this y-axis and it is also in phase so that will be our point so if we connect these two point that is our one one point so the amplitude will be this one and the phase will be 45 dp as we are calculating anti-clockwise okay so from this constellation diagram we can easily identify the amplitude and phase of the combined signal without memorizing it clear okay finally there is another type of amplitude modulation that is known as quadrature amplitude modulation in this modulation we basically combine two characteristics that is the amplitude and phase are uh, uh, we are using amplitude shift key and phase shift key to combine uh, these two signal so as we are using two different characteristics we can send multiple bits or more than one bits at a time here are some example of the uh, quadratic amplitude modulations here is a four given because we are using uh, using four different level so uh, as we can see uh, uh, let's say uh, for four different level we are sending four different combinations of two bit let's say this is zero zero this is zero one this is one zero and this is one one okay so for zero zero we are basically using a signal that has zero amplitude and zero phase okay for zero one we are using a uh, signal that has some amplitude and positive phase because it is in its right side okay and for one zero we are using a signal that has some amplitude um, that is the amplitude and some phase the phase is 45 degree okay and for this one we are using an amplitude positive amplitude oh, sorry we are using an amplitude and the phase is as you can see the phase is 90 degree okay so, so uh, for this quadrature amplitude modulation for zero zero we are using zero phase zero amplitude for this one we are using positive amplitude zero phase for this one we are using positive amplitude 45 degree phase for this one we are using positive amplitude and 90 degree phase okay so same goes for this one as we can see let's say this is zero zero this is zero one this is one zero and this is one one so for zero zero we are basically using positive amplitude and minus 45 degree phase for 0 1 we are using positive amplitude and what is the uh, let's say this one is plus 45 and for this one this one is plus 135 and this one is minus 135 so this is basically the previous one and this is another for um, quadrature amplitude modulation and here is another example where we can use 16 level to send 4 bit at a